Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at five things you need to know about your Lightroom 5 catalog. Let's get started. The first one is that your catalog can actually be stored anywhere on any of your local drives. So for example, if I go to my catalog settings, we can go to the general settings and I can just see the path to my catalog and more importantly I can say show it to me. Where is it on my hard drive? Now I chose to actually keep mine in my Dropbox folder. Why? Because that way it's being synced across all my computers. So when I want to access Lightroom from my MacBook Air, uh, I can just open up my MacBook Air, make sure it's synced, and I can also then just open Lightroom and there's my main catalog. Now, I get the question all the time, well, hey, I've got Creative Cloud. Can I store it in my Creative Cloud folder? Yes, you can, but the thing you need to be aware of is that Creative Cloud has an added benefit that it can um, maintain archives of things that get deleted. So since Lightroom catalogs are constantly being updated, it's gonna keep track of everything that you've done in Lightroom and every deletion and everything. So it could fill up your space pretty quickly if you don't go manage your archives um, efficiently or uh, regularly. So if you want to keep it there, you can, uh, or Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever storage space you want and it will there, therefore be synced across your multiple computers. So that's number one, is that you can store it anywhere. Now, as a bonus tip, there's a backup feature that Lightroom has. You can tell it to remind you to backup once a week, once a month, once a day, um, every time you quit Lightroom, and it will ask you, hey, let's copy this catalog somewhere. Since I back up my computer regularly anyway, I've got that set to never remind me, never do it because my catalog is already being backed up via various ways like crash plan and, and time machine, so forth and so on. So just keep in mind that if you wanna be reminded, it will tell you to do it. Number two, uh, let's head over to the metadata tag, tab while we're here in our um, catalog settings. And this is one of my favorite ones. And this is kind of a performance thing. So you'll wanna either turn it off or turn it on depending on your, your need for performance. With it on, automatically write changes into XMP. That means that when you make changes in your catalog to your images, you go in and you apply a filter, you uh, change the exposure, you add keywords. Well, with this being off, those changes are only being stored in your Lightroom catalog, which keeps Lightroom moving fast because it's not having to write anything to the images. Your images, therefore, if you were to open them up in another program, such as Bridge or something else, they would not reflect your changes automatically with this turned off unless you hit Control S or Command S on an image to save those changes into that actual file. I don't wanna have to remember to do that, so I turn this on so that Lightroom behind the scenes, when it's idle, is writing those changes into the actual files. That way, if I take the file somewhere else or open it in another program, it's got the things I've done to it um, already saved in the file. So all I have to do is wait for just Lightroom to finish writing the XMP and it will do that for me. All right, the next one here, let's go ahead and close the catalog settings. Uh, the next one is that, you know, Lightroom's catalog is keeping track of a lot of things. And if your performance ever slows down, well, you can go in and you can tell Lightroom to optimize your catalog. This says, hey, the last time I optimized my catalog was way back in January. Uh, this may improve the performance. So if I click the optimize button, I'll get a progress bar. It'll start optimizing the catalog, throwing away old data, not important things, things that are in the Lightroom catalog that it doesn't need anymore. And then my catalog will potentially run faster. So if you see Lightroom slowing down, go optimize your catalog. Number four, and this is probably my favorite one, in Lightroom, you now have the ability to build smart previews. Now, when you click on an image and you go into that image uh, full screen or you bring it up in loop view, Lightroom is building a preview for that image that it will store automatically. Um, I think I've got mine set for 30 days and then it will delete that preview. But if I don't have that image with me, meaning it's on a drive that I don't have connected, I'm on, on the road with my MacBook Pro and that drives at home, then what I love is that now in Lightroom, I can build smart previews. So for example, I can, uh, let's here, we'll just select a few of these. 
and we can go into the library menu. We can come down to previews and in Lightroom 5, I can say build smart previews. Now these take up a fraction of the space of the original files, but they let me do everything to them in Lightroom if I, just as if I had the original files with me. So I can develop them, I can change the settings, I can create virtual copy, I can do anything I want except edit them in Photoshop if I don't have them with me because I don't have them with me. But I can uh, treat them as if I have the actual files with me. So if, they're, if I have the smart previews built, which I tend to do upon import, but if you've already imported them and they're not there, you can go up to the library menu and build your smart previews and that way the smart preview file stays with the catalog. So it's being synced across my multiple computers. And if I ever go off on the road and uh, leave these images behind on another drive, then I can still work with them. And when I connect up that other drive, any changes I've made will be saved into the actual original files. So uh, building smart previews number four. Number five, and this is a biggie. This is where people get themselves in trouble, and I'm constantly reminding people of this, is that I've got this folder here of a, um, a shoot that I did, and I'm done. I've delivered the images. I'm done with the images. I don't need them on my main hard drive anymore. So what I want to do is move them to another hard drive, actually to a file server. And people get in trouble by trying to do that outside of Lightroom. They go to the operating system. Hey, there's a folder. I'll drag it over here. And you can do that, but now Lightroom doesn't know where it is anymore. And then you'd have to come back into Lightroom and reconnect those images to wherever you've moved them to. Well, I'm going to save you some trouble. If you can see here, they're on my main hard drive, which has limited space. And I want to move that A and B folder to my server, which has tons of space. And I want to put it in my Terry White Photography folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that folder down until I get to that folder that I want to put them in, let go, and now it's actually moving those images. So it's connected to the server, it's actually uh, drag, or it's actually moving those images for me, and when it's done, Lightroom will know where they are, it will take the folder out of the pictures folder in my hard drive, and put it in my server folder, and it will then know where they are from that point on. So as soon as that progress bar is done, I'm done. I don't have to do anything else. Lightroom is up to date. The images have moved. I've freed up the space on my hard drive and away we go. So there are five things that you need to know about your Lightroom catalog. We can go on and on and on about Lightroom. It's one of my favorite programs. I use it every single day, but that's it for this episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.